Modding, a PC gaming institution. Whether or not you're a PC gaming veteran, do note that the Steam Deck is a gaming PC, which means mods are very much a thing on this device. So go out there and download some mods. If you like our content, please enable notifications, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and join our Discord server in the description below. High Tech Low Life is also affiliated with the Steam Deck Discord. Links in the description below. Like I said, modding is a PC gaming institution. Many great ideas have been birthed from mods. Many of the world's most popular games were birthed from mods. And so your mods are no longer restricted to a laptop form factor or a desktop form factor. Now you can take them on the go with you in a handheld form. What matters in a game is that it's fun. And what's more fun than mods? Amogus. Mods, perhaps? You might be asking the question, how do I get mods? Not all games support mods, so for the purposes of this video, we're only going to be focusing on games with mods and modding communities. Depending on the game, there are a ton of ways to download mods, some easy and some hard. The easiest of which is to get your mods from Steam Workshop, provided your game actually supports it. Assuming, of course, you didn't buy your game from a different storefront, or, you know, pirate it. It's as easy as clicking the Steam Workshop, clicking your mod, and then going down and subscribing to it. It's literally that easy. It is worth noting that on Rivals of Ether, you may face a problem with actually loading the game after you subscribe. The game more or less gets stuck loading Vulcan shaders. The easy solution to this is to just restart your Steam Deck. Just be sure to subscribe to all of your mods first. As you can see here, we kind of went crazy with downloading a bunch of characters. And you know what? That's totally okay. It's all about downloading a ton of mods. Like literally, look at all of these characters, holy crap. Getting new characters at the click of a button. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? And these are characters created by players like you and me. And if you're so inclined, you can create your own if you really wanted to. So yeah, new characters, whatnot, whatnot. But we're just playing against the computer here. Where's the fun in that? Let's go online. In Rivals of Ether specifically, you can actually go into a private match and enable workshop characters so that you can play all of these modded characters. Of course, you won't be able to play this in like ranked modes or anything, but you know what, that's whatever. Who cares, right? Furthermore, quite a few of these characters can have unique mechanics as well. And there are plenty of other characters with like various special meters and whatnot. You know, kind of like some of the characters from Super Smash Brothers. It's, it's actually really cool. This is Starbound, one of my favorite games, and a game I like to showcase a lot on the channel. Mods are abundant and readily available to download on Steam Workshop. There's a ton of mods, like truly a ton of mods that you could be downloading. My personal mod list has like 80 mods. That's a lot of mods, isn't it? There's something to be said about Starbound's mods, because honestly, the base game, it's fun, but it gets kind of boring after a while. But the mods, there's just so much extra content that you could be doing, it's kind of crazy. The modding community has carried this game for the last couple of years, mostly because Chucklefish won't, but also because they just love this game so much, and the game gives you plenty of room to mod. You want new planet types? You want new races? You want new ships? New weapons? New blocks? New dungeons? New missions? New storyline? You could, you could do it all. Maybe even new gameplay mechanics as well. Of course, not all mods are meant to be balls to the walls insanity. Some are meant to fix issues with the game itself. You want Classic Sonic to suck less? Well, you can get this mod right here. Want to play as Blaze the Cat instead of Sonic? You can do that too. Maybe you just want a better translation. Whatever the case may be, mods have you covered. Unfortunately, we've veered into the territories of more difficult to install mods. These aren't on the workshop, so it's not as easy as pressing subscribe. Unfortunately, for these sort of mods, you'll need some sort of mod manager, or, you know, you need to run a batch script. Unfortunately, Jade couldn't get the batch script to work on Linux, so she did it on Windows and just copied the files over. It's a pretty easy solution, I guess. We definitely need to look more into how to adapt these scripts to Linux. This is Sonic Adventure DX, Director's Cut. And as you can see here, instead of launching the regular launcher, it instead launches a modded launcher with mod options too. You know, a mod letter so to speak. 
we actually installed something on the Steam Deck called SADX Mod Loader. More or less, the process was just adding the installer as a non-Steam game, and it just works. It's a pretty nifty menu, and you gotta say, look at all of these mods. Like, holy crap, that's a bunch of mods that you could be adding. I'm not really someone that's into Sonic mods, though I know for a fact that Jade is, and Jade's the one that recorded this footage, so like, yeah, you know. Wait, why is it running at 1 FPS? One of life's greatest mysteries, I guess. As you can see here, it just works. Well, after you do a bit of installing, but it's whatever, really. The big difference here is that we're using the Dreamcast graphics rather than the GameCube and Windows graphics. Modding is also a great tool if you're a, a video game purist and you like playing the original versions of the games the way they looked originally. Sonic Adventure 2 also has a mod loader similar to Sonic Adventure 1. Now, what if you just wanted to change the entire game itself? This is Dash Adventure 2. So originally, fun fact, Sonic the Hedgehog could have been Sonic the Bunny. This mod takes that concept and runs away with it. It's more or less a total conversion mod. Yeah, the game superficially looks very similar aside from, you know, the characters being different. But the mechanics are quite different as well. Different characters have different properties, and so they move about the levels very differently. It's a very different experience, but it's a very interesting concept, honestly. This mod was developed by Revenir, one of Jade's friends as well, so if you want to check out his Twitter, his Twitter will be in the link in the description below. Finally, Valve's red-headed stepchild, the unloved middle child of Valve, Team Fortress 2, a game so beloved by many gamers that Valve refuses to update it, ever. That's quite alright though, because mods are a thing. Alongside playing the base game, like, on its own, you know what else people love doing? People love making these crazy whack-ass servers. And the best part is that you don't have to download mods to play these games on these servers. You know what happens? TF2 just does it by itself when you join a server with custom items and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. More games should do that. Is Valve gonna make a TF3? Well, they can't be bothered to update TF2, so I'm gonna say no, they're not. TF2 is one heck of a time, and I know gamers love TF2. That's why, well, that's why people keep playing it. But that's okay. Even if Valve doesn't love TF2, the gamers do, and so do modders. 